Hello and welcome to Crash and Learn FPV. This is the third and final episode of my Ishin Wizard X220 noob setup. Today I will start off in beta flight and configure my transmitter switches. Then I will solder on the addressable LED strips and configure those. And then we're off for our maiden flight. Alright, so I got the wizard hooked up. Let's connect. And we're off into the modes tab right here. And this is where you set up your arm switch, your flying modes and your beeper. And you can switch off your LEDs and a bunch of things. So basically what I've done is I have set up an arm switch which allows me to disarm my quad. Which means that the motors will stop to spin instantaneously. Uh, it's safe to crash <laughs> and it's safe to pick up the quad. So I've set up that on the auxiliary 2 channel which is this switch right here. If you're not sure what to use you can go to the receiver tab. So if you look at auxiliary 1 right here you can see that it changes value. And I know that this is auxiliary 2 which is my arm and switch that I'm not gonna touch because I've been lazy and I haven't removed my props. And what you're looking for is this little dot right here, this indicates the current state of the auxiliary 2 channel. And what you do is you set up a range and what that means is when this dot is inside of this range it is enabled. So for instance on auxiliary channel 1 I have angle mode enabled in this top position and if I switch it to the middle position you will see that it turns grey and this little yellow dot moves to the uh, middle position and down here I have the beeper set up also on auxiliary one channel but over here so when this little guy goes over here the beeper sets off and this is really helpful for when you crash and you're not really sure where you crashed because it's easy to uh, lose orientation while flying FPV so there's that for now let's disconnect And let's start to solder on the uh, addressable LED strips. So these are the uh, LED strips that I'm gonna put on on the back here. And these are addressable strips and this is important because otherwise you cannot uh, change the color and you cannot make them blink or like yeah do patterns and stuff. So it has to be addressable and the way you know this is either by the name there's a specification for what beta flight supports. So you got your ground pin, your voltage pin, your D out and D in which is the signal coming from the uh, flight controller. So I'm just gonna wire ground to ground on the flight controller this one to 5 volts and this one to a pad on the flight controller which I'm gonna show you it is located here it says LED strip so the signal wire is gonna go here and then the plus and minus are gonna go yeah I'm gonna have to wire it to the power distribution power distribution board here it goes this one there you go. I'm just gonna pre tin all the pads. And by connecting the strips with these ground pads, I don't have to actually wire a ground lead between them. So this one was actually unnecessary. And again, I'm reusing the wires from the old LED pads. And for signal wire, I got some white wire. I like to be consistent and use either white or yellow for a signal. But you can use, of course, whatever color you like. There we go. Nice and solid. And then we just need, we just need two very short strips for the uh, signal wire and the uh, voltage wire. So I'm gonna pre-tin 
Hopefully it works as I plan. Right, and there's one end of the lead and the other one. There we go, D out to D in. And now I just need another short wire for the uh, five volts. There, well, yeah, there you have it. One LED strip soldered. I uh, I resoldered these wires so they go inwards instead, so they are more hidden. And I just soldered the uh, positive and negative lead onto the power di distribution board. Actually, on the same uh, pads that the old LEDs were soldered to. So five volts go there, and the signal wire goes to. LED strip right here. Now let's fire up beta flight again and see if it works. So in order to use the LEDs uh, you go into configuration and you enable LED strip which gives you this little option in the menu. And you press save and reboot. And then we can go into LED strip. If I understand this correctly, this is a uh, like visual representation, a top-down view of your quad. And this is the front of your quad, and this is the back of your quad. And as far as I've read, you press wire ordering mode to like create a chain of LEDs. So I'm just gonna start in in the middle. Sixteen LEDs, and then I guess you just press each LED and you assign a function. Uh, I'm not really sure how this works, so I'm just gonna try it out and see what works, and uh, let's see if anything happens. I'm gonna press color, and I want a purple color. I want the uh, LEDs to go with the color scheme of the wizard. Just gonna press color. Yeah, that's more like it. It is a bluish purple kind of tone. And then you can set these up to do a bunch of things. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna try some stuff out and I'll come back. Right, so I think I got the uh, LEDs set up uh, as I want them at the moment. I just got some purple color going on here to uh, go with the uh, general color theme of the wizard. But also I have set the LEDs up to act as a battery voltage warning, uh, which is one of the many functions you can use them for. So right now I'm just gonna force this uh, warning to go off. I'm gonna raise the battery voltage just to show that it works. I'm gonna press save and reboot. And now we got a visual warning to tell us that the uh, battery is running low and it's time to land. So that's it, I think. I'm gonna put this guy back together. Hopefully I will find all the screws again. And I am gonna get ready for my first flight. And I'm pretty excited, but I am gonna have to wait to, until tomorrow, because now it's dark again. Okay, so here it is. It's fully assembled again, and it took a bit longer than expected. And that was mainly because the receiver, I couldn't find a good spot for it and I actually ended up taking it out of its uh, plastic casing because I felt it was too large and I couldn't fit it anywhere. And so what I did was I just uh, stuck it to the uh, top plate here uh, with some double-sided foam tape and uh, I'm not really super happy with how the antennas ended up either. Uh, I don't know, I got too much wire hanging out here and I don't know what to do with it actually. But all in all, I'm super happy with how it turned out. I'm happy that I didn't break anything while taking this apart and doing soldering work on it. 
and the first flight will be line of sight because my fascia goggles haven't uh, arrived yet and I don't have a GoPro to mount to it so I will just try to document it from the ground and uh, we'll see how it goes so stay tuned for the next episode where I will uh, do my first flight of the Ishin Wizard X220 Thanks for watching, please feel free to comment, like or subscribe and I'll see you!